Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Monday, June 28th. I hope everyone had an incredible weekend. Got to experience some of that good weather. Didn't get caught in too much of the rain and were able to deal with some of the mugginess that we had going on. I want to thank you for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app today. And I want to take a moment to celebrate the WKYC team because over the weekend, at the end of the week last week, WKYC.com was awarded Best Website in Ohio at the 2021 All Ohio Excellence in Journalism Awards from the Press Club of Cleveland. Also want to take a moment to thank the Press Club of Cleveland because they have awarded the Three Things to Know podcast Best Podcast at the 2021 All Ohio Excellence in Journalism Awards. So if you haven't been catching that podcast, Thank you to the Press Club of Cleveland for that award, and I hope that you will join me and check that out. That drops once a week. All right, let's get to the news of the day. Here in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine is signing an executive order today to allow college athletes to profit off of their name, image, and likeness. Now, we're seeing laws like these go into effect across the country. This was prompted by legislation that started out on the West Coast, and then there was slowly more and more people gaining support for this. These are called NIL laws, and they're going to effect in multiple states later this week. So Governor DeWine took it upon himself to make that happen here in Ohio, because last week, efforts to do that through Congress here in Ohio, through the legislation here in Ohio, did not pan out. Here's what happened. There was an NIL bill introduced by State Senator Naraj Antani, a Republican, and it was backed by Ohio State University leaders, and it was set to pass with bipartisan support. But right before that was to happen, Ohio Representative Jenna Powell, also a Republican, added language that would ban transgender girls from participating in girls and women's sports. With that amendment, the bill lost the support of Democratic legislatures, and so therefore it did not have what it needed to go into effect as soon as July 1st. Now, here's why this is crucial for the state of Ohio. With Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, New Mexico, and Texas already having passed NIL legislation that will go into effect on July 1st, schools like Ohio State could have found themselves at a competitive disadvantage should the Buckeye State have failed to pass such a law by Thursday. So with an executive order, that problem has been done away with. And now here in Ohio, college athletes will finally get to be compensated for their name, image, and likeness. In other sports news, Cleveland's Josh Naylor, outfielder, he has been diagnosed with an ankle fracture and a dislocation. That's confirmed what a lot of people had suspected after watching a nasty collision in the Tribe game on Sunday. Now, the Tribe confirmed today that he stayed in Minnesota overnight, traveling back to Cleveland today. And once here, he'll be evaluated by the Cleveland Clinic by a foot and ankle specialist, Dr. Mark Berkowitz. They'll determine the extent of the energy and a timetable for surgery on that ankle. When it happened on Sunday, the tribe asked fans to keep Naylor in their thoughts. Here's what happened. He collided with second baseman Ernie Clement. This was the bottom of the fourth inning. It was during the 8-2 and two loss to the Minnesota Twins on Monday. The two players collided in right field. They were running full speed after a fly ball hit by Jorge Polanco. Naylor went airborne, and his right leg buckled underneath him when he landed. Pretty tough to watch. Now, this is just one more person on the injured list for the Tribe. They've already dealt with Fran Mill Reyes missing time with an oblique injury. Catcher Roberto Perez has a finger fracture. And the team's top three starting pitchers, Shane Bieber, Aaron Zavalli, and Zach Plesak, currently on the injured list. Tough time for the Tribe wishing him a speedy speedy recovery wishing all of them a speedy recovery now the red cross is making another plea for blood donors this is a severe shortage they're saying at this time this is the second time this month that they're asking that people please get out and donate blood they're asking for donors of all blood types especially type o and people who are donating platelets they said their teams are working around the clock to provide blood products to hospitals and there have been an unusually high number of traumas emergency room visits overdoses and transplants so if you're looking to donate blood we have all the ways you can do it on wkyc.com you can make an appointment through the red cross blood donor app you can go to redcrossblood.org 
You can call 1-800-RED-CROSS or you can enable the blood donor skill on any Alexa Echo device to help you make that appointment. If you make a donation between July 1st and 6th, you'll get a Red Cross embroidered hat. And if you come between July 7th through 31st, you'll get a $10 Amazon gift card by email and a chance to win gas for a year. That could be worth a whole lot of money. Now, if you have received a COVID-19 vaccine, you can donate in most cases. You need to know the name of which vaccine you received to determine that eligibility. Now, today... This is the point where we would normally go over the COVID-19 numbers across the world here in the U.S. and across Ohio. We'll not be doing that every day now. Instead, we'll do it weekly. And any time that there is something particularly newsworthy about those numbers, okay? So I'll be sharing those with you every Tuesday from here on out. So check in Tuesday for those COVID-19 numbers. Now we move to Olympic news. If you've been following, you may know that Corey Crawford, who is the son of our Jay Crawford, he has been in the Olympic trials, hoping to compete as a long jumper in the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympics, which of course are being held this year in 2021 because of the delay. Well, he finished his journey yesterday. He placed eighth in the finals for the men's long jump. Unfortunately, that will not get him a ticket to Tokyo. The top three will be going on to the Olympic games. Now, with the Olympics being postponed, that did add to the training for Corey. He had been training at Spire Institute here in Geneva, like every Olympic athlete who had their season delayed. And Corey, understandably, disappointed after this, but expressing that he has a tremendous amount of respect for the people who performed yesterday. Yesterday, by the way, in Eugene, Oregon, where the finals were held, the event was delayed by hours because of heat in the triple digits. So extreme heat, pushing that back several hours for them. And when they finally did it, he came in eighth place yesterday. He says that moving forward, the sport has given him his best friend, his training partner, and the love of his life. So he really feels like he is the winner. And to everyone who helped him on this crazy journey, he says, you know who you are. Thank you, he says, from the bottom of his heart. Congratulations, Corey, on incredible accomplishments. We very much look forward to seeing what you do from here. Now, today is important to note that this week on Thursday, those extended license registration deadlines will expire. It was in November that the state of Ohio passed a bill into law that extended ID requirements for IDs, car, and vehicle registration, extended those expiration dates. Anyone who was born between March 9th, 2020, when we first became aware of COVID-19 here in Ohio, and April 1st of this year, was given more time to renew those things. Well, that expires this Thursday. So if you need to get in there, now is the time to do it. Now, if you are heading to the BMB this week, there could be potential delays because there will be other people who have had these extended deadlines as well. So make sure you anticipate that. And we have it linked at WKYC.com. You can get in line online. So save yourself the wait, schedule that appointment, get in line on your way there. What else is happening July 1st? Cedar Point will no longer be requiring reservations at the amusement park. And it's lifting its capacity restrictions. Now, this is ahead of its 150th anniversary weekend celebration. That's happening this week. You do need still reservations for Cedar Point Shores. You can make those reservations online, so keep that in mind. Also, Cedar Point is saying that they will now be open each day through Labor Day and most nights that'll end at 10 p.m. except for the 4th of July when the park will be open until 11 p.m. so that you can see the light up the point fireworks display. And if you were in town and about this weekend and if you follow the Jonas Brothers on Instagram you know that they were here in Cleveland. They were at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They were at coffee shops in Ohio City. They were riding around on the Hope Memorial Bridge taking selfies, posting videos and it was very exciting for a lot of people including one particular fan where Nick Jonas pulled up to that fan and she just happened to be wearing a Jonas Brothers t-shirt and he yelled out the window, nice shirt, and then they took a selfie together while he was in the car and she had her dog there. Very fun moment. The Jonas Brothers are here in town filming the Macy's 4th of July fireworks spectacular. That will air on Channel 3 at 8 p.m. on the 4th of July this coming Sunday. They've been very tight-lipped about the specifics of it, but obviously the Jonas Brothers are here in Cleveland filming their portion of this. And remember, if you haven't been able to catch the Jonas Brothers in town this time, they'll be back at Blossom Music Center in September for their Remember This tour. 
Here's something to watch out for. You may have seen online that there has been a black bear spotted in Willoughby Hills. That happened late on Sunday night. There's the video of the bear eating from a bird feeder in the backyard. We have that video on WKYC.com. Now, this person lives near the Manakiki Golf Course. And this is just one of several recent bear sightings, according to Willoughby Hills Police. Apparently, Lake County is a common place here in Ohio to spot a black bear. That's according to the Willoughby Hills Police. But they have some reminders to people. If you do spot a black bear, leave them alone and be cautious. Now, they're omnivores. They'll eat plants and meat, but they are very opportunistic. They'll eat whatever they can get their paws on, basically. So berries, grasses, insects, unsecured trash cans, apparently, also bird feeders. Here's what the police say. Here are some tips. If you happen to come across a bear, also the Ohio Department of Natural Resources says, act calm, warn the bear that you are near. Talk in a firm, calm voice. Allow space between the bear. Make sure that the bear sees there's an escape route so the bear doesn't feel cornered slowly back away maybe raise your hands above your head to appear that you're larger than you are if the bear approaches and get out of there exit the area probably one of the most important things there also today we have learned that the newest gerber baby has been announced after a nationwide contest here's a fun fact the very first gerber baby her name is Anne. she'll be 95 in november well, this year's Gerber baby is also holding the title of Chief Growing Officer. His name is Zayn Kahin, and he is just precious. Now, his parents, Aaron and Michael, learned that they had won live on the Today Show from their home in Winter Park, Florida. They said that they weren't sure that they were going to be able to conceive naturally. So when they decided to finally have a baby, they tried, and they were very surprised that Aaron got pregnant very quickly and that they called Zane their shining light in their lives. He was born on February 3rd, 2021. Congratulations to the family. And speaking of people who are welcoming new families, we are nearing the end of Pride Month. So here at WKYC.com, we've been focusing a spotlight on the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning members of our community, commonly referred to as the LGBTQ plus community. Last week in our Turning Point special, there was a piece that aired about families who are taking advantage of fertility advancements and advancements in the legal field in order to build their families in non-traditional ways. So I encourage you to check that out. The families that we had an opportunity to speak with are just incredible. We talked with Mason and Ann Caminiti about their daughter, Gianna. Also, Daylin and Crystal Washington about their journey going through the process, starting an IVF procedure soon. And also Melissa Hall and Kristen Klink and their two children, Ireland and Scotland. Absolutely precious families. Go ahead and check that out. That's linked at WKYC.com. That's it for your 3 News Now update today. I'll see you next up on What's New with your trending stories in the Clicking in Cleveland segment. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for more 3 News Now.